This video is sponsored by Autodesk. Something I always struggled with in Revit, structure. It's something that my bosses, they just always wanted me to include because it makes it a lot easier when you're detailing and when it comes to documentation for construction. My issue was that every time that I created my structure inside my model, the boss would get back to me and say that the roof has changed and then everything that I did in my model, useless because I wasn't able to update the structure with the model that had changed. I'm going to show you how to create structural framing that updates with your model so that you don't have to come back and change it every time your model changes. To do so, I'm going to use this model as a reference. Now, the first thing I'm going to do just to simplify this for yourself is to isolate both of these roofs. I'm just going to press II to isolate them. Now, what we've got here is a gable roof and a skillion roof. Now the simplest one we're going to do is the skillion roof. So we'll start with that. Now what I want to do for this model is create a set of rafters that are actually holding up the roof. That's the main structural element of the roof, the rafters. And I'm going to create purlins in an opposite direction above the rafters, smaller structure that actually holds on the roof sheeting. And then underneath the rafters, you're going to have the ceiling battens, which is going to be the structure, the secondary structure that's holding up the ceiling. I'll show you how to do that. Now, what I would use to do is just go to the structure tab and add in a beam every time I wanted to create a rafter. And this would take an awful long time. And obviously it will change with the model, which you don't want to happen. So instead of that, I'm going to use the beam system tool. And this is such a game changer when it comes to doing really anything repetitive inside your model. And it's similar to an array tool, but it's built within a boundary, I guess. That'll make sense once, once we get into it. So I'm just gonna create a beam system. I'm gonna click on that button. What it's asking us, if you look down at the prompt line down the bottom left, that's what this is if you never knew that was here. It says click to enter line start point. Now that doesn't really give us much help, but what you can see is that we've got a boundary line selected. So what we need to do is select a boundary for this beam system. Before we do that, I'm going to have to set a work plane because if we just do that now, it's just gonna be on a flat work plane, more than likely something like that. I don't even know what work plane that is. <laughs> I don't think it's got a work plane at the moment, but some rectangular column, it would be placing a beam system on. So we don't wanna use that. What we want to do instead is pick a plane. So I'm going to click pick a plane, click OK. What we want to do is select the bottom of the roof. Now this is just roof sheeting, so it's only 16 millimeters. But now we've got a work plane that's in line with that sheeting. So what we can do now is select the extents of our rafters. And that's going to be just the extent of the roof. So I'm using the pick line tool and I'm just going to select the boundaries of this roof. I'm hoping I selected the right one there. There we go. Now with that selected, what we can do is change the beam direction. So at the moment you can see, if you never used this before, that these two lines outside the boundary line represent which way the beams are going to be going. It's the beam direction. And so what it's saying is that the beams are going to be running parallel to that line going in this direction in line with the roof sheeting. Now for our sake, that is what we want. But if, say, what we wanted instead was to have the, we were going to want our purlins to go in the opposite direction. Let's just say, for example, we were doing the purlins now. I'm going to click on that beam direction tool and then just select the boundary line that we want the, the rafters or the purlins to follow. So you can change that in any direction. But for us, we're going to keep it on that line and we're just going to keep that as is. Now, what you're going to want to do, the first thing is just check the properties panel. That's this side here on the left. We're gonna want a fixed distance. So that's saying that there's a fixed spacing between each rafter and this is center to center. So what it's saying is it's the center of one beam to the center of the other. We're gonna make this say 900. So they're gonna be rafters at 900 centers is what that means. The justification is the center, which is good. Now the beam type, if you haven't already loaded in a beam, what you can do is go to the insert tab load a family and then what you can then do is find where you've got your material library if you don't have the revit content library you can find that by just googling revit content library and you'll find the latest library and that will come with a bunch of beam types which you can find under structural framing we've already preloaded some in we usually do with every project rafters are generally you know they can be any size a 190 by 45 is a pretty average size for a rafter here in australia so we're going to use that. The only other thing we're going to want to check is the phasing, new construction, that's fine, whatever it is. 
Now what we can do is go back to the modify tab and we're gonna click the green tick. What you're gonna see here is a number of green rafters. The green just shows that it's new construction. Yours probably won't look like that unless you've got a phase filter on. So you've got a number of rafters here now, which are in the same plane as your Skillion roof, which is pretty cool. Now in this case, you wouldn't really have Perlins picking up this Skillion roof. You would just run it on these rafters because there's so many of them and the spacing's fine. But for our sake, we're going to say, for example, that there are purlins sitting on top of the rafter. So what I'm going to do is select that beam system. Sometimes it's hard to select, but once you see it all light up blue, then you can select it. I'm just going to copy this to the clipboard and then use the drop down where it says paste, paste aligned to same place. Now, without unselecting or deselecting that system that we just created, because it's in the exact same place, what I'm going to do is go edit boundary. I'm going to click the beam direction to be the opposite direction of the rafters and then I'm going to change the beam type to say a well maybe we'll go a 90 by 45 purlin and we want it on flat so it's laying flat instead of standing upright now if I click the green tick you'll see all of these purlins pop up but they're currently on the same work plane as the rafters so they're sitting or they're cutting through the rafters which we don't want we want the purlins to sit underneath the roof sheeting but then on top of the rafters. So I'm going to select the beam system of the rafters, which is this one here. Then I'm going to edit the work plane of that. I'm just gonna click pick a plane. I'm going to select the bottom of one of the purlins. And now that brings all of those rafters below it. Now the good thing about using the beam system with work planes like this is that if you ever decide to move this roof, let's say we give it a four degree slope all of those beams are now going to be on a four degree slope as well they're going to move with it or let's say that this roof is now you know 300 or 200 mils higher all of those beams are moving with it which is pretty damn cool i'm just going to undo those changes so we don't change everything but there you go if we wanted to create ceiling battens that sit underneath the rafters now all we have to do is select the purlins beam system I'm going to copy that, paste it to the same place, edit the work plane, and select underneath the rafters. And now you've got battens that the ceiling can be fixed to. So it's really as simple as that. I'm now going to do the gable roof because it can be a little bit more difficult. So I'm just going to isolate this gable roof here. Now you can see we've got a different scenario, a whole different kettle of fish, box of frogs, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Nothing too different it's just two different planes and then you're going to have a ridge beam down the middle and you're also going to have a couple of valley beams which sit, kind of sit down here and then if we want we can also put a fascia beam down the sides here so there's a few different structural elements but I'll show you how to do that the first thing we're going to do is create a ridge beam for this what we want to do is just create a single beam because it is just a single beam you don't need to create a whole beam system. Cool thing about using just the single beam is that we can select 3D snapping. 3D snapping selected. I'm then going to go to the properties panel and select say a 300 by 63 beam. And what I can do with that selected is create our ridge beam along the ridge of the roof. At the moment, it's going to be sitting a little bit weird on the roof. If I go elevation, of that what we want to do is maybe bring it down let's bring it down say 20 mils so if i go 4966 for the offset and we also want to make the other one the exact same otherwise it will be a bit wonky and then that's going to drop that ridge beam down quite a little bit now at the moment it's got an end extension of 10.5 for some reason so i'm not sure why that would be i'm just going to select a side on view and see i think it's not meant to be so what I'm going to do is make that zero there we go now it's not going to be sticking out so there's our ridge beam what we're going to want to do then is create another set of rafters so to do that I'm going to do the same thing as before create a beam system I'm going to set the work plane to the bottom of one of these roof planes create a boundary line using the pick line tool all the way around our roof there we go I'm going to click TR to use the trim or extend tool and then make sure the beam directions in the right way change our beam element to 190 by 45 
You can have a, let's say, 1200 fixed spacing, and then I'll give that the green tick to create our rafter system. What's quite nice is that your beams are cut to this valley, but they're not being cut to the ridge beam, and they're actually not sticking straight. So you've got this weird angle that follows the roof, when really we want this to be a straight cut. Now there's a few ways, a few ways to fix this. I'd say the easiest way to change this is by creating a reference plane and cutting the elements to a reference plane. So what I'm going to do is just find a plan and I'll select this uh, roof. I'll just isolate it and then create a reference plane by pressing RP. I'm just gonna create a reference plane that st strikes directly down the middle. Isolate them just to make it a bit easier. Now we want the reference plane to be in line with this side. I'm gonna create another one side. What we can do with this is then cut our rafter along this reference plane. So we're obviously gonna to need to be able to see our rafters. I'm just going to create a elevation to the side here. Did now what we can do is see our rafters. So if I click isolate, now what you can see is that we've got those rafters. So you'd know that the ridge beam would be sitting here. All of these rafters are sticking through that ridge beam. So now what we can do is just cut each of those rafters to that reference plane. I have to do this for each one, kind of annoying, but we don't have too many, so it's not too bad. And now you've got a straight cut in line with this ridge beam, which you can see in the 3D. Some of them weren't done because I didn't see them in the view, but that's fine, you get the idea. Now, if we wanted to do that with this side, it would be a little bit more difficult. Now, the reason why that's going to be a little bit more difficult is because if we create a reference plane in line with this roof sheeting, what you're gonna notice is that it can't do anything because the elements don't intersect. So what we need to actually do is select all of these and give them an end extension just so that they pass the reference plane. So I'm guessing 200 would do the trick. They are now fully past the reference plane. Poochie's having a bit of a stretch. He's got his butt in my face. <laughs> but now what we can do is cut each of these elements to that reference plane and that will give them a straight cut. So what we've got now are our rafters, our ridge beam, we're going to need some purlins. So doing the same thing as before, we can copy this beam system and align it to the same place. We're going to then change the distance between them to, let's say they're 600 centers. It's going to have a bit of a fuss about that, but that's all right. We're going to go 90 by 45s on flat. We're also going to want to change the beam direction to be in line with the ridge beam like this and that looks pretty good but we want the rafters to then be a little bit lower i'm going to just click tab to find that beam system edit the work plane pick a plane the bottom of the purlins there we go now you would do this the same for the other side no worries about that we're also going to create a fascia beam or a edge beam whatever you want to call it go into the structure tab beam we're going to use 3d snapping again and we're just going to select the bottom of the roof to create our end beam you're going to notice that it places it from the center now we're going to want to bring it over just 31.5 mils so if i come to the y offset value and make this 31.5 that will bring it in line with all of that now you might think now our rafters are budding in to this edge beam, which we don't want. And rather than having to change them all manually, what we can just do is select that reference plane. And I'm just gonna move it over. And now all of them are cut in line with that. So it, they actually move with the reference plane, which is really cool. So we've got our edge beam, we've got our um, ridge beam, which you don't see at the moment. The next thing you wanna do is create some valley beams. Now for the valley beams, again, you would just do the same method of creating a 3D snapped beam and select those points. For the front beams, you would also do the exact same method. Um, it's as simple as that, really. You just wanna make sure that you're using the right work planes and you're snapping to the right things. So now usually if you would move this up, say a couple hundred mils, it would all just move up with it. But there's a few other things constrained in this model. So I don't really know what's going on with this model. But if you followed along with this tutorial, you would have seen that it would all move as one unit because of the way you've built 
each element. I want to say thank you to Autodesk for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.